Okay, first one. Okay, welcome, welcome back. Uh, just recall um, that we wanted to compute the uh, statistics of critical points uh, in this uh, constrained um, constrained problem where you have a linear uh, a set of uh, linear equations with a quadratic constraints that imposes that the solution uh, must live on the sphere of radius uh, n. We're going to do it using the uh, Katz-Rice uh, formalism that uh, in our uh, setting translates into the following set, the following uh, problem. So we are going to integrate over all degrees uh, of uh, freedom. So all the degrees of freedom of our uh, equations uh, here, uh, which are lambda, the Lagrange multipliers, and uh, the components of the vector uh, x. We are going to impose that uh, x uh, square in modulus must be uh, equal to n. We are going to impose the constraint on the uh, equations that must be uh, simultaneously satisfied. And these equations are written uh, here. We, we derived them uh, earlier by imposing that the uh, gradient of the uh, Lagrangian is equal to zero. So we're going to impose that a delta, that A transpose A X uh, minus A transpose ah. B. <laughs> रिटर्न नहीं ले गया बोलो ना सुबंदा जी को कॉल करेगी अच्छा ठीक है अच्छा ठीक है आई थॉट इट वाज ओके सो माइनस लैम्डा एक्स सो दिस इज अ अ uh, delta that imposes the constraints that all our equations must be simultaneously uh, verified, our equations for the critical point. And then we need to impose that the uh, determinant of the uh, Jacobian uh, matrix, we need to include it here with an absolute um, value. So the Jacobian matrix uh, is an n by an n plus one times n plus one uh, matrix because we, we have n variables, the components of the vector x, plus uh, an extra variable that is uh, the multiplier lambda. And of course, we want to average this object uh, over the disorder uh, encoded in the random matrix A and the uh, random vectors, random vector B. So the uh, Jacobian, you can convince yourself uh, that by differentiating uh, these equations with respect to x, we get uh, a block matrix uh, here. So this blocks, this block here is just this term here. So we are differentiating this equation with respect to X and we are obtaining A transpose A minus lambda I N. Okay. Then we need to differentiate the equations with respect to the uh, constraint to the uh, Lagrange multiplier lambda. So we will get a minus X here. Now we are going to include the uh, next equation here, which corresponds to uh, the constraint that X must, be, must live on, on the sphere. Uh, this gives upon differentiation, the following term. And then this other constraint does not depend on the, uh, on the uh, multiplier. So we get a zero uh, here. So this is the uh, setting. We need to average over A and B, but we notice that this term here and this term here do not depend on the vector uh, B. So the first thing that we can do is to average over B, which is a, a, a vector of uh, normal IAD uh, variables uh, because B only appears uh, in, in here. Okay, so uh, let me let me try to do it uh, here. Yeah. 
So we do that. Uh, the type of integral that we need to uh, compute is as follows. Uh, DB, uh, this is a multivariate uh, M-dimensional uh, Gaussian uh, vector. So we get a Gaussian term. And then we, we have this delta term with the B in here. So we can rewrite this object as U minus A transpose B, where the vector U is A transpose A X minus lambda X. Okay. So uh, this Gaussian integral with the delta constraint, uh, I put the result in the, uh, in the handout that's uh, equation equation four. Uh, you can you can compute it uh, easily by uh, introducing an integral representation for this uh, delta, which is dk over two pi to the n exponential i k transpose u uh, minus i k transpose uh, a transpose b. And then exchange the order of uh, integration. You will get a Gaussian integral in in B, and then another uh, integral that you can compute in in K. So I will not follow all the uh, the steps, but the result is given in uh, in the handout, and I suggest that you um, try to compute this uh, explicitly. The final uh, result is this. Um, So we have a square root of a determinant that comes from uh, of W. W is uh, A transpose uh, A, and uh, that comes from one of the Gaussian uh, integrations. And then you get a one over uh, two sigma squared, U transpose W to the minus one uh, U. And the average over uh, the randomness in B is, uh, is performed. Now we need to uh, integrate, or oh, the next step is to integrate over X, okay? So let me just rewrite here. So we have the lambda, the X, this integration has been done. And here we have the result of this integral, which is two pi sigma square, n over two. We have a determinant. And then we have exponential minus one over two sigma square. We have uh, U transpose, that is this object. So we get uh, X transpose. Then we get uh, w minus lambda identity transpose, but this object is symmetric. So there is no extra transpose. We get w to the minus one, and then we get w minus lambda identity. And then we have the determinant in here with an absolute value, which is a mass uh, of, this, uh, of this object uh, here. And we want to integrate over, uh, over x. So the uh, integration over uh, X follows from um, an observation. So we have D lambda DX, the, uh, this object here. Let's call uh, all these uh, terms in, in the integrand um, I of X and lambda. So the observation that we have is that uh, I of lambda uh, has a particularly nice uh, rotational invariant uh, feature. So it follows, uh, so property one, we have that I of X lambda is uh, unperturbed, is, it is unchanged if I Instead of computing it on X, I computed it on O times X, where O is uh, an orthogonal matrix uh, N by N. 
okay? And in particular, this uh, implies that I is only a function of the modulus square of, uh, of X. This is not uh, entirely, um, and of course I forgot to add that there is, there is an average over A and the definition here includes the average over, over A. Okay, so the, this entire object, including the, the average over the matrix A, it has this particularly nice uh, rotational invariant uh, property. So I will not uh, prove it, even though I give some uh, hints and some steps of uh, the derivation in the, uh, in the handout. So essentially, and here there is an X, essentially what you have to do is you have to replace every instance of X with O times X, and then use the fact that uh, w and the measure is rotationally invariant uh, itself. So you can reabsorb this extra O into the measure, the integration measure over, uh, over A. If you do that, uh, essentially this, uh, this property comes out, um, comes out uh, naturally. So since uh, I depends only on the modulus square of of X, in particular, we can choose, it depends only on the length of X. Uh, we can replace X with uh, square root of N times the unit uh, vector, the unit base vector, because the, the dependence on, uh, on X is only on the modulus, which is equal to N, okay? So there is, there is no actual dependence on the angle that X forms with, uh, with the axis. And if we do so, we need to just evaluate the determinant of this object when X has this particular uh, form, okay? So we need to compute the determinant or the absolute value of the determinant of this matrix where we have minus root n, the basis vector one, so what you can do is, uh, this is a block, uh, a block matrix, and they give in the handout um, the uh, formula for the determinant of a block, block matrix. This is an n by n block, and this is a, 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 a line. This is just a vector here and the vector and the vector there. Okay, so the the determinant of a block matrix is particularly simple uh, when the matrix has this uh, this form. Um, if you do that, you you get two uh, n that comes from these. Uh, sorry, this is two square root of n. So there is a two n that comes from from here, and then you get an absolute value of a determinant. of a size n minus one, what is, what is uh, W tilde? W tilde is a parameterization of W. So I'm using the following uh, parameterization for W. Okay. So I'm calling my matrix W uh, a single number omega this W tilde of size uh, N minus one, and then two vectors that I call B. If, uh, if this is my parameterization by applying twice, essentially, the, the formula for the block, for the determinant of a block matrix, uh, you get this, uh, this uh, result, okay? Questions about this? So we are, we, we worked out this, uh, this object here, and we are now using the fact that this uh, integral, including the average over A, 
where A, of course, only appears in this combination, A transpose A. So this is a, actually an average over W, okay? The corresponding Wishart, uh, Wishart matrix. Okay, so now I have to... Yeah, so I'm, I'm a, uh, all I'm saying is that it is convenient to just parameterize my matrix uh, W uh, as, as a block matrix itself. So uh, you parameterize it in, in this way, you have just a single element, a single real uh, element W, then you have a matrix omega uh, W tilde, uh, and then you have two vectors, uh, just one vector in its uh, transpose because the matrix is, is symmetric. And if you if you do that, uh, this this determinant boils down to computing the determinant only of the of the right uh, the right corner. Okay, so everything is written in terms of this uh, of this W tilde. Okay, now we need to work uh, on this uh, exponential here. So let me write this as, so we have exponential minus one over two sigma square. X, we wrote it, uh, we, we chose this direction. So we have root n and then another root n here. So we can write n, then we get E1 transpose. And look what we have here, W minus lambda identity. And now I'm multiplying W minus one times W, which gives the uh, identity, minus lambda W to the minus one, applied to the vector, uh, to the basis vector uh, A1. And if I further uh, compute uh, this object explicitly, we get uh, W minus lambda, W times W to the minus one, which is the identity, minus lambda times the identity, plus lambda square uh, W to the minus one. Okay, so in total, I get W minus two plus lambda square W to the minus one. And I'm uh, sandwiching this matrix between the two vectors, the two basis vectors, E1, where the, only the first element is one and all the others are zero. That's the direction that I chose. Okay, so what is the, the result of this uh, sandwiching? Well, the fact that I'm selecting a, a particular element of this, of this matrix, which is the element one, one, right? So what I get here is exponential minus n over two sigma square. And then I have the element one, one of this matrix. Yep. Of, of course. So can you can you read this? Probably not. This is the limit. It's one of the many limits. Yeah, one of the many limits that we're going to take. Okay. Good. Okay, so uh, we need to compute the element one one of uh, this matrix. For W, there is no problem because we know what the element one one of W is. Due to this parameterization, this is just little omega. But now we need the element one one of the matrix W to the minus one, okay? And this can be computed with some, some work because this matrix is a block matrix itself. So we need to invert a block matrix, but it is just algebra. It is, it is not a very difficult operation, okay? So if we do that, uh, we observe that uh, W to the minus one element one one is one over omega minus V transpose omega, uh, sorry, W tilde to the minus one 
V. Okay, and this is obtained using uh, the formula for the uh, inverse of a block matrix. This was the uh, second, second bit. So we, we have a result for the determinant, for the absolute value of the, for the Jacobian, and we have a result for the exponential term of my, of my integral. And then I'm using uh, another property, which is also mentioned in the, uh, in the handout in the first, uh, first page, and I give uh, a reference where this is, this is proved. Uh, if W, my Wishart matrix is parameterized in this way, so as a block matrix, then it holds that omega W tilde and this particular combination, omega minus uh, V transpose W tilde to the minus one V, are positive definite. So essentially, th this is a property uh, about minors of uh, a Wishart, Wishart matrix and peculiar combinations uh, of it. So I give a reference, it is just a, a theorem. So I, I don't know how much more convincing I can be of than, than, than that. And uh, and I I give I give you the, um, the it is specific to the wish Wishart ensemble in the sense that it it, it exploits the positive de definiteness of the Wishart ensemble and this peculiar block decomposition. Yes. Okay. So if uh, if this is the case, using this property, uh, we can infer that uh, the measure when we integrate over uh, omega uh, over uh, w and and this is Wishart uh, will become a product of uh, thetas times the omega dv the w tilde. So eventually we, we want to integrate over these, these terms in the decomposition instead of integrating over the full matrix w, okay? So now I want to, uh, but I also need a further, uh, um, a further uh, uh, property, um, which is the fact that, but I'll, I'll give it later. Okay. Can I, I don't have space anymore. So can I erase a bit of everything? Theta is a uh, heavy side uh, theta. So I'm just imposing that uh, w, w tilde is Wishart itself. That's a second consequence of the theorem. W is a number and it must be positive. And, and this combination must be, must be positive. This, this is not implicit in this change of, uh, of variable. I need, to, I need to include it, include it explicitly in the measure when I, when I do the integral, okay? Otherwise, I would be tempted to integrate over all omegas, like even negative but omegas. So, so the theta w tilde is like a formal notation to mean that you integrate over the set of positive definite matrices. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So uh, I hope I can raise a bit of everything. Uh, if I cannot, just shout now because otherwise it's going to be too late. Okay. 
So now that we have performed the uh, average over B, we haven't performed the average over uh, so the the average over uh, the number of uh, uh, critical points of this of this problem is a certain constant that we can characterize uh, explicitly. We still have a remaining integral in in d lambda. We have a remaining integral in the uh, omega between zero and infinity. We have an integral over the vector B and we have an integral over W tilde, which is the parameterization of my Wishart uh, matrix uh, W. Then we have uh, a theta that imposes uh, this condition, this positivity conditions on the minors of my uh, matrix W. Then uh, we, uh, let me just write various uh, terms and I explain where do they come from. There is a, a term that comes from the determinant of the matrix W. Uh, write it and so all all this uh, this stuff comes from uh, the the previous term that depended on w once we are using this uh, decomposition this block decomposition and then we have uh, a term that comes from the uh, exponential and the one one entry of the term in the exponent times the average the sorry the absolute value of the determinant of W minus lambda I and minus one. So this term comes from here. The exponential term comes from this, is the element one, one of that special matrix that was in, in the exponent. And here I'm using uh, the result over of the probability density function for the Wishart uh, ensemble, which is also included in the, in the handout. So remember we had to average over A, which in practice is the uh, matrix of coefficients and A only appears in this integrals as in the combination A transpose A, which is Wishart. So all I have to do is to average over the distribution of a Wishart uh, matrix, which is which is known in closed form. So uh, the Wishart So that's this is the weight function that I need to use to average my uh, my object over. Uh, and now all I have to do is to replace uh, instead of W, uh, this expression here in terms of, of this parameterization. So for example, the trace of W that appears in the exponent is what? Is omega plus the trace of uh, W tilde, which is exactly what I write here. And for the determinant, I use the same, uh, the determinant of a block matrix. Yeah, there is a question, maybe the, we want. Yeah. Uh, this one. Um, yeah, the notation is uh, quintessentially bad. So it's my fault. Um, so 
this this means this is a constant that that we know because i'm collecting all all the content all constants like for example this constant which is a different constant constant but then i have for example a 2n uh, here and i also have other constants that comes from the integration over over x so there is there is a number of constants that i'm lumping uh, together in this symbol but this is fully explicit we, we can write down explicitly what what this number uh, is but i shouldn't you are right i shouldn't have called this cn i'm i guess i'm running out of letters so this is an, another constant and it also depends on m but then i definitely shouldn't use the c here so let me call c hat for the lack of a better option they are not this, exactly the same thing but they are related um this one is included in uh, i think equation one of the uh, of the uh, handout so i hope apart from the technical steps i hope that at least the, the picture is uh, is relatively clear all i'm using is a parameterization of the wishard a block parameterization of the wishard matrix and the fact that the measure uh, gives some constraint on the range of variability of uh, of these uh, these numbers so far the expression looks complicated but in in the end it is reduced to uh, an integral over a wishard matrix uh, a smaller wishard matrix and uh, and integrals that uh, we are able to perform essentially but so if you had uh, a similar expectation to perform but with a non v chart ensemble but as long as it's positive definite things generalize right or... the uh, so you would have you would have this condition uh, and the and this condition still in there uh what you well everything hinges on the fact that you that you have an explicit uh, an explicit expression for the weight for the weight function of your own ensemble yes. uh, if you have that then then everything will will go through uh, then the fact whether you can perform the integrals or not this is uh, to be seen but in the case of wish white wisher we can do that okay so um I would like to uh, erase here. Same warning applies. Okay. Now uh, we need to choose which um, <laughs> which integral we want to do um, we want to do first. So it turns out that we can compute the integral over uh, v uh, which lives in r uh, n minus one and the integral over omega uh, relatively uh, easy um, so we have a theta so we want positivity of this uh, term and uh, then we have uh, m minus n minus two over two then we have exponential so we we can lump the uh, exponential uh, together and we can we get one plus one over sigma square so uh, the exponential comes from here and then it comes from uh, here as well so we can lump these two together and then we have another exponential of uh, minus n lambda square divided by two sigma square um, omega minus uh, v transpose uh, raised the minus one and uh, this this is just a number of course it is a number that comes from uh, here okay and uh, all this in integral in the end will uh, depend on uh, w tilde okay so clearly uh, there is uh, an obvious change of variables here so uh, the obvious change of variables is to call this this object q 
because it appears uh, here uh, as well. Okay. So with this uh, change of variables, uh, my integral I of becomes something like integral in dv. Then we have an integral in dq. And we want q to be positive. Then we have q to the power uh, m minus n minus 2 over 2. Um, we have an exponential of minus n over 2, uh, 1 plus 1 over sigma square. And then omega is uh, q plus b transpose Um, minus n lambda square over two sigma square q, right? And the change of variables as a Jacobian, uh, as a Jacobian one. So we are we are trading omega for q. Questions? <clears throat> no, it was still about this property that you use six here. So the, the, the only condition that the Vichart law induces on V is this positivity constraint. The, the law of this V is only given. Yeah, because, because we know that, uh, that the minor, which is uh, W tilde is Wishart itself. Okay. Yes. V Sorry? Yes, that's my question. It's the only term induced by the Vichart measure on V. Is, is this which? So which which term in the measure? You mean? So this one. This one and this and this one. This one, this one, and the fact that W tilde is Vichart, which which. Okay, and this is the one induced by the. Okay. This one, yeah, it, it comes from from yes, because be, yeah, because the, the the you have the Wisher me measure has this determinant of W, but W is a block matrix, so you need to expand the determinant of a block matrix, and 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 you get a determinant of one of the blocks times this this extra term in front, right? Okay. So now, uh, do you have a guess of what is the next integral that we want to do? You've got a 50% chance. There are only two integrals. <laughs> so the, the V integral is Gaussian, right? Because V only appears here. So it seems like a very good uh, choice. The two integrals are essentially then decoupled. More morally, they are decoupled. Okay, so we get an integral in dv of exponential minus n over two, um, n over two, uh, one plus uh, one over sigma square, uh, v transpose w minus one v, first integral. And then we have a q integral, m minus n minus two over two, exponential minus n over two, one plus one over sigma square q minus n lambda square over two sigma square q. Now, if, if you look at this, uh, this integral uh, in, in q that has an exponential of q and a one over q, um, with some experience, you would recognize that this probably leads to a Bessel, Bessel k function, okay? So this integral will lead to a Bessel k function and this integral leads to something that depends on something simple that depends on, on W tilde. So essentially we cracked uh, two integrals uh, very, um, very easy. So this is a Gaussian integral, grazie. In N minus one. How much time do we have? Five minutes?
less than that? I can't, I can't manage in less than that. Five minutes. Okay. Good. So uh, I, I, I won't complete, uh, I will not complete these two steps because uh, I mean, this is just a, an, a known integral and this is uh, just a Gaussian, Gaussian integral. So in the end, what, what will appear here is a determinant of w, w tilde out of, this, out of this integration. So there is only one integral essentially left, which is uh, complicated, and it is the integral over uh, w, w tilde. This is a nasty, nasty integral because of this, uh, this term. Yeah. This term is, is very nasty because of the, of the absolute value. We need to integrate over matrices uh, with an absolute value of, of, of a determinant. So that's, uh, that's the main technical hurdle that we need to, uh, to overcome. These two integrals are trivial. Okay. Um, what is left then? Uh, well, let me erase here. So the integral that is left is, I'm just uh, recalling here. Sorry, Pierre Paolo. Yeah. From the first definition of I W till, maybe I'm, I'm blind, but how I see that you express everything in terms of Q and the next line is you have this V integral, the V Gaussian integral, you have a V term. Yeah, the, and the, you have an exponential V transpose. Huh? But where, where is it at, at the previous line? Uh, because, uh, because you had an exponential of uh, omega. So, you, so omega, you omega is Q plus this term. Omega is Q plus this term. Okay. Oh, okay, you integrate. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying that Q is omega minus this uh, this term, okay, which okay, okay. which implies that omega is Q plus, Sorry. and and that's what you what you put it here. Thanks. Um. So this is the uh, very complicated uh, integral, which. Actually, uh, Jan and, and Rochelle managed to um, to crack uh, using um, using a trick that that Jan had developed uh, um, earlier to to deal with this kind of uh, uh, of at, at this point without this trick we would be lost because we wouldn't we wouldn't know how how to to handle uh, this particular. Uh, this particular integral with the absolute value of the of the determinant. Um, let's call this object phi another that depends on uh, on lambda. So I think I don't have a chance to be able to, to crack this uh, down today, but it's only one page, one page and a half. So probably I can. Uh, I can do it next uh, next time in the first uh, ten minutes. This is very important because it, it is a, it is a very clever trick, and uh, you will put it in your bag bag of tricks that you you might need at some point. You never know when, but uh, uh, you, you'll you'll bump into something like this in your career, I hope, and uh, and it is very important to to have seen it at least once. Okay. So apart from, from that, essentially we have all the ingredients and it is just a matter of bookkeeping and put, putting all, uh, all together. And, and the, the integral, the problem can be cracked until the end for finite uh, n and, uh, uh, and m. And then we, we, switch, we switch gear once again. Okay, thanks very much. I'm happy to take any, uh, any questions. I have one question. Yeah. Uh, would it be relevant and how harder would that be to try to compute the, expected, the, the expectation of the logarithm of the number of critical points? 
uh, the logarithm of the number. The expected log n. Okay. Um, w w I guess without using replicas. With or without. With or without. With uh, may be doable, but there is a caveat because I'm doing uh, I'm doing a replica calculation for this problem, not exactly about uh, okay. uh, about this, but. Um, so replica replicas done in in a physics as a physicist has a problem here. So we need, we really need the help of of rigorous um, rigorous people to uh, to put this on uh, on uh, a rigorous footing. Because one of the reason why I'm interested in this problem is that the replica calculation gives a result that may be inconsistent with what we know from other from other uh, sources. And huh. there, there is a previous case where replica calculations in a similar problem gave a wrong result in a range of, uh, uh, in a, in a range of parameters. So uh, we, we don't understand where the problem comes, uh, comes By from. By replica, you mean replica symmetric? Uh, it, it is, yeah, in the standard, you know, replica symmetric ansatz. Um, yeah, this is a replica symmetric problem, yes. Is it easy is it to, to see that? Uh, I, I will. I will do it. Okay. Uh, so I'm hoping to, to do it, and I will point out what the pr problem is, or it is the absence of evidence. Actually, so we, mm. we get a result that appears to be totally fine, but the same thing in a previous problem, very similar, was actually disproved by uh, rigorous uh, rigorous treatment. And so, the answer is not, uh, I guess, a simple. So the, the, there is a, there is a regime where the replica calculation is fine. And the regime where the replica calculation gives a result which was proven in a similar problem to, to be wrong. No, but I, I mean, the, 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 the naive uh, problem would be that it's a uh, replica symmetry breaking, but it's not the case. Uh, that's not the source. That's not, that, the, source, that's not okay. the source of this, of this issue. It's, okay. It must be more subtle. It sounds very interesting. Okay. Yeah, that, that's why. Uh, I want to, I want, it, there's, there's a lot that we don't understand here. So I, I thought it was a rich and interesting problem to, um, to discuss. Okay, nothing else? So we'll start again at uh, three with Camille Mal we'll start uh, discussing free probability. We have a bit of time. Sorry, I've eaten up too much, too much time. Oh, no. <laughs> Are we still me? Yes, of course.